call I'm going to call this meeting to an order. That's all right. For the Brawley City Council. For the Brawley City Council and successor agency. Success successor in to the Brawley to Community Brawley Redevelopment Community. Agency. Mm -hmm. Regular meeting, right? For November seventh at six PM here at the City Council Chambers. All right? All right. Let's give him a big round of applause because that takes a good job, brother. Good job. Good job. All right. So I'm going to help you out here. It's not easy. All right. You good? Yeah. All right. So um, if we can ha have the uh, roll call, please. Council Member Hamby. Here. Council Member Rebelar. Here. Council Member Barajas. Here. Council Member Warden. Here. Uh, Council Member Rios. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Castro. Here. Mayor Meeks. Here. Mayor Nava. Here. Okay, right. everyone's present. Right. All right, everyone's present. Yes, sir. And then the invocation by Council Member Hamby. Say that. Invocation to Council Member Hamby. All right. Let's all stand. Can I have my dad, please? Hold on, hold on. We'll get that ready now. Let him do the prayer. All right, let's all bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, we are thankful to you this evening for this time to gather again to direct our city. We thank you for each person that made the effort to be here tonight. We thank you for our honorary council members and mayor. We ask that you would just uh, bless our time this evening, that you would give us wisdom, um, that you would give our city uh, direction, and that uh, we would continue to progress and things would get better and better. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And Mayor Meeks, uh, you can remain standing. Mayor Meeks, uh, you would like to call somebody to do the Pledge of Allegiance. Who is that? Can my dad please do the pledge of yeah, allegiance? All right, Dad, lead us in the pledge, please. Right, face, the face the flag. This one, part of the interview. Right, right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's have a seat. All right. The next item on the agenda, uh, Mayor Meeks, is the approval of the agenda. Is there a motion to approve the agenda as written? I'll so move. I'll second that motion. There's a motion and a second. And then um, all those in favor, please say aye. Say aye. 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 All right. Any opposed? Motion carries. Great job. All right. So the next item, uh, Mayor Meeks, if you don't mind, I'm going to take this uh, to present, okay? okay? The next item is special business. And so um, first, I'd like to thank you all for coming out here. As you notice, we do have some uh, additional council members and a, an additional mayor here tonight. And it's uh, honor of mine and for our council to present them to you. It was uh, something that came up uh, just a few weeks back, uh, put a little program together to get uh, just civic engagement, get you know young people involved in, in local government and, and just uh, having some uh, input from them. So reached out to the superintendent, uh, Ms. Fox out there who's in the audience, great job by the way, and uh, she was fully on board and uh, within a few days, quite honestly, between her and her staff, they were able to um, assist us in, in selecting uh, or actually putting together an application with some questions and a short little essay that, that the students had to put together. It was opened up from grades uh, fifth through eighth and it was the local elementary schools here in Brawley. And so we had 28, uh, excuse me, 23 applications. And of the 23 applications, we had three finalists. And you're looking at the three finalists. So for, first and foremost, let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> so, you know, they, they had really interesting stories, you know. I, and, and we went into it blind. I, there was no mention of names. There was no mention of, um, you know, anything, you know, whether boy or girl or whatever it was, other than, you know, the grade and, and what they wrote. And so they all had great commentary. And initially it was just going to be mayor for the day. But quite honestly, uh, all three presented some very unique ideas. And, and to be honest with you, the three of them represent this community very well. It's like it encompasses who we are as brawling, right? from all aspects of our lives, right? And so uh, the, 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 the 
the different elements and different items that they brought forth were with respect to like some humani humanitarian um, aspects of life here in the city of Brawley. Um, some were concerned with, uh, you know, the way parks and the condition of parks are and, you know, even uh, stray animals and those sorts of things. And then uh, uh, Mayor Meeks um, was interested in making improvements to the skate park, which he uses frequently. So, but all, all these kids here and the young adults, young kids, um, they have some great ideas uh, for our community. And it really was eye-opening for me to see um, their engagement, their involvement, and what they had to say. I can tell you parks and recreation are important to all. And so that wasn't not, you know, it wasn't like it was eye-opening, but it really was because their perspective is very different from an adult's. They're kids and they're using the parks in a different way that we do, right, in the way we view it. And so I just want to commend them for the work that they've done and uh, congratulate them. We have a presentation and a proclamation uh, to recognize them. But briefly, I'll tell you what we did today, and I'll, I'll try to keep it very short. So we opened up here at 8.30 in the morning, and they, they sat here on the dais. And uh, they, they were here with KYMA. If you haven't seen the newscast, it's on. Uh, we had the Desert Review here as well. We had, um, you know, just people here to help support them as well. And we had city staff, uh, police chief and his staff, give them a tour of the police department. They saw all the technology. And they even met, who, who's, the, who's the canine unit that you met, remember? Um, Jax. Jax, that's right. You met Jax and his handler. And they were even um, gifted a... Uh, uh, a small um, plushie of, of Jax. And so Jax is trained to detect uh, weapons. He's trained to detect currencies. Uh, and so they were there and, and got to see him in action. He actually, uh, they hit a gun and he was able to detect it. And so that was, you know, just a good experience that they, they saw. And so from there, we went uh, the, to the fire station and they were able to get on the fire engine, see the, the uh, you know, the, the fire station number two over by the airport here in the city of Brawley. Our chief was a great uh, host to them as well, and uh, he took them around the city, and, uh, you know, they, they were able to ride in the fire engine, and, and, and that's our newest unit. How old is that, chief? Four months old? Four months old, and so beautiful unit, and uh, in fact, I haven't even ridden in the thing, and, and this <laughs> mayor was already taking my seat, you know, so he was, he was up there having a good old time. But um, it was just great to see their involvement. Uh, they're a little bit shy, so they're not uh, too talkative. But I will tell you, they all have very interesting uh, perspectives on life. Um, Brianda Rios, she's new to the country. She's been here for about a year. And so her, her, her native language is Spanish, and that's her strength. And so um, you know, it is just special to see somebody who's coming across uh, to live in the United States in this country, and it's a beautiful country, and uh, you're having an opportunity to get involved in your community and your country and make a difference. So let's give her a big round of applause for that. <laughs> and today she's joined by uh, her mother, Paola, and her six-year-old sister, that is Beth. So they're back here as well, um, supporting her as well. So congratulations to the two of you. Then we have Mr. Mayor uh, uh, Braden Meeks, and uh, he's joined by his uh, mother, Brianna, and Father Paul. And so they've been joining us all day long, and they're, they're very, very proud of, of their boy. And then your brother, uh, Brendan, right? Brendan, he's nine years old, and you give him a hard time sometimes, Mr. Mayor? Sometimes. All right, there we go. Well, that's good. You know, you're a good big brother, and you have some great ideas. Your father was telling me about his experience in getting that st skate park um, started here in the city of Brawley, and, uh, you know, what he did to petition to get it rolling, and, and uh, that's a passion of his of going out there with you, and now you do that as well, right? Yeah. And those are one of the things that you want to help improve, right, the skate park. And, uh, the, you know, Chief was gracious enough to, to drive the fire truck past it so they can see it. Um, up close, and that's all, you know, that's a great experience for him. And lastly, we have uh, Maite, and so Maite, you've been joined by your mother as well, and your grandmother was here as well. Yeah. Are they here now? Uh, no. They're not here. Would My you like to is. introduce their name? Or your um, Melina Vallejo and <laughs> oh. Go ahead. Juan Barajas. Perfect. Beautiful. Well, no, and, and uh, you know, your, your ideas with respect to, um, you know, she talked about, you know, parks and that, uh, importance in our lives and talked about how stray animals are important to her and wanting to help them as well. So it's all of the aspects of life here in the city of Brawley, and uh, I think that's all things that we can all consider, you know, and so congratulations again to them. Um, 
I, I will allow, uh, of course, my council members, I know Donnie participated in some of the things. If you want to share some comments as well before we do the proclamations and, you know. Would, would love to. And I'll, I'll just say this, how um, fortunate. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor, um, for really leading the charge in opening this up. But uh, I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor, and your fellow council members. Um, we've been um, very impressed um, spending some time with you uh, guys today. How you carry yourself is a big part of, of, of leadership. And uh, I think that was very well noticed today. And uh, as much as maybe the mayor's mentioned that, you know, a little bit of shyness, we all have that, believe me. Um, we kind of shared with you a little bit of what we go through um, as well. So you guys are doing a fabulous job, but very well written. I did read those essays. Um, and I will tell you there were several others that were well written. So it was a very difficult decision. Um, I know the mayor and myself um, uh, had some conversation, you know, where we went back and forth. But um, the community should be very proud. I know the families are, um, our, our teachers, staff, board members. I know there's many here uh, today um, as you guys go forth and go back to your classes in school. And you're going to really be, um, you're going to lead your, your, your fellow you know, students, family members, community members, as you continue on on your journey. So it's been a pleasure um, being able to spend a little bit of time with you guys today. Yeah. So congratulations. Yeah. I also would like to mention just before, and I'll open it up, of course, but I do want to mention um, we were very honored to be able to have um, a luncheon over at Las Chavelas. They they, uh, they provided the luncheon for everybody, and that was, uh, I thank them very much. They're always great community supporters, and uh, I certainly appreciate it very much, um, the effort they took to designate a space and, and provide a meal for everybody. So that was very nice of them. I appreciate that. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Kester, would you like to share something? Yes, yes. Uh, you know what, first off, uh, I'd like to uh, thank you, Mayor Nava and uh, Councilmember Warren for putting this on. And it's great work, a uh, great way to engage our youth. And uh, to you guys, congratulations, uh, uh, young men and young ladies. It's a big deal, because I think this is where we start to form our, uh, how you know we participate in our community, right? And at a young age, you get to see how this works. You get to see, you know, everything that it entails. And then hopefully, you know, it's a beginning of, of a long, successful career and whatever you choose, right? But this is how we develop our leadership, not necessarily in politics, but community service comes in many, many ways. Y a ti, Briana, este, felicidades. Me da un gusto saber que ya estás aquí. Este, bienvenida aquí con nosotros y te deseo todo, todo lo mejor del, del mundo. Aquí en este, en este bonito país. So that's all, guys. Thank you guys so much for participating. I mean, I'm truly grateful for what you guys are doing right now and the fact that you put yourself out there like that. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Council yeah, Member uh, or Council Member Henry? Mayor, now thank you for the opportunity to congratulate these young people for, uh, for coming in and participating, for putting themselves out there with their essays. And um, I think um, each one of us has been in that hot seat over there where, where Mayor Meeks is sitting and feeling so nervous. Yeah about having to speak in front of everybody. And um, so we appreciate you guys coming in. Congratulations to all of you. And, and yeah, Mayor Nava, I think this is a great idea. Um, I think a lot of times young people don't really engage in, in leadership and in, and in community service uh, if their parents aren't involved or if they don't, if, if, if one adult doesn't come and, and uh, make these needs known to them. So thank you for for making this happen as well. But congratulations to all of you, and welcome to the dais. Yeah, right, there we go, yeah, thank you. Welcome. Yeah, yeah congratulations to you three. Um, I, I haven't, I haven't, I didn't, get, I didn't get to read the essays, but I have to get access, access to them. I appreciate to see, because uh, the power of your, the written word, the power of your voice is something that I hope you can continue. I, I hope I can get these essays, we can continue this, that this isn't a one-off, that we can, I'm sure, as children, you have a perspective that is unmatched, that is pure, that is innocent, that is uh, that we need to respect. And so I hope we can get those essays and we can get you involved in these issues, because whether it's parks, whether it's animals, whether it's just simply the community and engagement, and uh, appreciate and acknowledging your perspective as a child in our community, I hope we can continue that. So really, uh, really, you have a lot to be proud of. The parents, grandparents have a lot to be proud of, because uh, to put yourself out there like that is commendable. So congratulations to you and your families, and we look forward to continuing this as you guys are now leaders in our community. So thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Mayor Meeks, well, we're going to continue with this. Uh, there is a presentation and a proclamation to recognize you and the honorary council members, and I'm going to I'm gonna read. Uh, there's some nice proclamations out here. We're going to, uh, as council, we'll, we'll hand them out, but uh, that's for your yourselves. And then... Um, 
we'll wrap things up for you. I know you probably have a busy day tomorrow, and uh, we don't want to keep you out too late because sometimes these meetings go on for a while. All right, so I'll read the proclamation. City of Raleigh proclamation in recognition of honorary mayor and honorary council members for the day. Whereas the City of Raleigh acknowledges and values the significant role quality education plays in the betterment of our community, the economic vitality of our city, and the prosperity of our society. And whereas the City of Raleigh takes pride in supporting and encouraging the academic growth and well-being of youth by collaborating in innovative programs that offer new experiences and opportunities for the City of Raleigh's youngest citizens to learn and grow. Whereas the Brawley Elementary School District, in partnership with the City of Brawley for this year's Mayor for the Day essay contest, received numerous well-written essays from students grade levels 5th through 8th. And whereas Braden Meeks of the 5th grade at Myron D. Witter Elementary School, Maite Barajas of the 8th grade at Barbara Worth Junior High School, and Brianda Rios of the 8th grade at Barbara Worth Junior High School, in submitting essays selected in the top three of all papers submitted, and who have demonstrated commitment, leadership, and compassion for the City of Brawley were selected as honorary mayor and honorary council members for the day. Now, therefore, I, George A. Nava, mayor of the City of Brawley, along with the Brawley City Council members, do hereby proclaim Brayden Meeks, honorary City of Brawley mayor for the day, Maite Barajas, honorary City of Brawley council member for the day, Brianda Rios, honorary City of Brawley council member for the day. The City of Brawley, California, in witness whereof I have hereunto set my hand and caused the seal of the city of Brawley to be fixed on this seventh day of November 2023. Let's give them a big round of applause. <laughs> All right. Now, before we go out there, I'd like to, you know, Brianda, uh, Mayor Meeks, uh, might there any words that you'd like to add to the public or say? I mean, I know that you're all a little bit shy, but anything that you'd like to add? Anything, my friend? No. You're good? Yeah? <laughs> you're just... Same but you, you, do you have a great day today? Were you, it was fun? Yeah. All right, good. And you're going to stay engaged and try to make uh, improvements over at that skate park, right? Yeah. Fantastic. Brianda, algo que decir? Ningunas palabritas, no? Okay. All right. All right. They're a little shy. So no, no words, but I mean, they have spoken to me personally, and, and I can tell you, um, you know, it is a little bit nerve-wracking being up here and, uh, you know, expressing yourself, but I can tell you they have great ideas, great people, and this is hopefully the start of many things uh, to come for them. So let's, uh, again, one last round of applause here. And let's come up here. And parents, if you want to come up to take pictures with your, with your student. It never goes away. Let's go, brother. Come on. Good job. I should have worn time. The one with the next shirt that fits my neck. All right. So we have. Uh, all right. So we have the mayor of the day. Yeah. Yeah. Right there. Mayor of the day. Here you go, my friend. And these are the proclamations. Our beautiful city staff put these together. They look wonderful. And here is a little gift for you. Let's all gather around, council members, and uh, let's get in here. <coughs> let's take some pictures. Parents, you can come up and take pictures as well if you'd like.
we have items that we have to discuss. And sometimes we agree, sometimes we don't. And at the very moment, right now we're going to take a couple of so thank you again uh, to our mayor and to our council members um, for the recognition and for the effort that they put in, and I, I appreciate them very much. We also were at the, like I mentioned, the Quick Quack Car Wash. That was their first ribbon cutting ceremony, so they were very excited, and we were excited to be there as well, so that's great. Um, the next item on the agenda is a regular business item. And so these next two items, we are going, they're going to join us in our vote. Obviously, their vote is ceremonial, and our vote obviously is not. Um, but we will knock off these two items. And, uh, you know, when, when I call for the question uh, or, or, you know, somebody will make a motion, there will be a second. And then when we decide to vote, if you want to y vote yes, you say yes. And if you decide to vote no, you wait till I ask for that, and then you can vote no against it. But, uh, you know, this should be pretty, pretty straightforward, okay? Okay. Regular business discussion potential action to approve Hidalgo Society's request for street closure fee waiver for the annual Noche de Fiesta event presented by Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager. Good evening, members of the council and honorary council members. Rachel Fonseca, Parks and Recreation Manager for the City of Raleigh. Hidalgo Society will be hosting its yearly Noche de Fiesta event. The Hidalgo will need to close a portion of the street in front of their hall to accommodate their event. The street closure has been approved by Police Chief Duran and Public Works Director Ron Medina. There is a $500 fee associated with the street closure, and the Hidalgo Society is requesting the City Council to waive the fee. Okay. Yes, so in the spirit of catacol and some of the, be consistent with some of the other fee waves we've had over the last few weeks, I'll motion to uh, approve the fee waiver, uh, or Mr. The, to waive the fee. Mr. Mayor, we do have a question yes. by our honorary yeah. council member. Mm -hmm. Is there a fee to attend this event? No, it's gratis. Okay, perfect. All right. So there's a motion by Council Member Revelar. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second by Mayor Pro Tem Castro. And uh, now I'll ask is uh, all those in favor, you can say yes or you can say no. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 means yes. So we're voting yes. So are you voting yes? Yes. Okay. You can say aye. <laughs> aye. aye. Say aye. We've got an aye. aye over here. Too. And over here? Aye. aye. Okay. Aye. So motion carries. Thank you very much. Thank you. We appreciate that very much. That's their first vote. And so the next item is uh, by Chief York. And you all remember Chief York from your tour of the city today. All right. Discussion potential action to approve Cal OES transfer agreement to receive a water tender and associated equipment. Good evening, Mayor Nava, City Council, Honorary City Council members, City staff and public. Uh, if you recall, uh, last year we actually was he were here uh, requesting another transfer where we received what we call a Type 6 four-wheel drive engine. So recently we came available what we call a water tender, which is a very fancy word for a water truck with fire department markings. Um, this piece of equipment is very much utilized. We've used it countless times in the past. But we've always relied upon mutual aid to receive this equipment from Imperial County Fire or from the city of Calipatria. When this became available, it was really surreptitious because we've had issues in the past where we have areas within our city that what we call low hydrant density, where hydrants are very far away or there's no hydrants available within a distance that we can lay a hose to. So essentially, this vehicle is a portable hydrant with some limitations. Mm -hmm. um, Partnering with Cal OES, we receive the vehicle at no cost. We do have some burdens that we have to share. Uh, the fuel we use is ours. We're liable for the first $100 of any maintenance or any maintenance below $100. And of course, if uh, Cal OES calls this unit up to respond to the large wildfires or large incidents, we uh, agree that we will supply it to them and our personnel. Our personnel hours, however, are compensated back by the state on an hour-by-hour -hour basis. Okay. So. Fantastic. All right. Um, all right. Is there a motion to approve this item? No well, motion we, to approve. We, oh. Oh. we were going to make a, a oh, joint okay. motion. Oh, okay. wait, 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 wait. I, I take back my motion. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. We'll make a motion to approve the uh, uh, item as presented. Fantastic. Would you, the two of you, like to second that? We will second that motion. Right? Second? Second. Okay, perfect. All right. Sure. All right. So all those in favor, please say, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Right? Aye. aye. All right. And any opposed, that means 
Anybody not want to approve that? None? So the motion Here carries. Guys, please. Good job. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now we have a water tender. Now let's give them a big round of applause for their participation in tonight's meeting. I would like to thank uh, uh, Mayor Brandon Meeks, Council Member uh, Brianda Rios, and Council Member Mike Tavares. Thank you all very much for your participation. Um, we'll we'll uh, allow you to, to go home now. It's been a long day for you. You started at 8.30 in the morning, and we've had a long day visiting different offices and, and meeting with a whole lot of people. And so um, I do, again, want to thank you for your participation, your engagement. Special thanks to the school district. Uh, uh, Ron, uh, thank you very much for all the work that you did and your staff and uh, our city staff. They did a fantastic job. Everybody contributed, you know, from, um, you know, the leadership to just the working staff and everybody doing every every part to make this special for everybody. So thank um, you all very much. Mr. Mayor, can we have a five-minute recess to allow the honorary council members to take some pictures? Absolutely. Yeah. Let's do that. We'll take a five-minute recess, and we'll come back. In fact, let's make it a ten-minute recess. How about that? Ten-minute recess. You guys can take pictures, do all your stuff, anything you want to do up here, do your thing, and then we'll, we'll get back started in ten minutes. All right? Thank you. Beautiful. Mr. Mayor, it was a pleasure. Yeah. That was uh, real meaningful for them and for us as well, so we appreciate your patience. We are going to move on to public appearances and comments, uh, not to exceed four minutes. This is a time for the public to address the council on any item not appearing on the agenda that is within the subject matter jurisdiction of the city council. The mayor will recognize you when you come to the microphone. Please state your name for the record. You are not allowed to make personal attacks on individuals or make comments which are slanderous or which may invade an individual's personal privacy. Please direct your questions and comments to the City Council. Is there anyone here who would like to make a public comment on any item not appearing on the agenda? Hi, I'm Lori Gibson. I'm just here tonight to just bring to your attention that my fellow councilman or my fellow uh, committee person um, is in the hospital. He suffered an aneurysm. Is them all the same one? He's in Palm Springs. He's paralyzed. Oh, now goodness. I know what's going to happen. So for Jesus Calderon. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just if you guys could just say a prayer for him. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you. We're we're sorry yeah. to hear of the circumstances. Yeah. It's terrible. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> all right. Is there anyone else who would like to make a public comment on any item not appearing on the agenda? Please. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak, uh, uh, Mayor Nava and Council Members. Uh, my name is Joel Dominguez. Uh, I'm a local small business owner. Uh, I own Box Drop Mattress down on 6th and Main. Um, I'm just uh, wanting to bring up uh, the recent uh, postings of the project for Main Street, the repaving and the utilities that are going to be uh, replaced. Um, just trying to understand like if there's any way that we can get a little bit more information uh, on the exact dates and the, the phases and the different blocks that are going to be affected at certain dates. I know it's a construction uh, project, so there's going to be a lot of different, uh, you know, uh, dates that are going to shifting around. Um, and also like if there's any type of uh, construction mitigation assistance for like small businesses that are going to be affected by you know, the lack of uh, foot traffic and or, you know, vehicle traffic uh, throughout Main Street. Um, and uh, pretty much I just want to see, like, if we can get that going for all the small business owners that uh, are on Main Street. All right. Well, thank you. Uh, with respect to the um, uh, the construction schedule, we do have uh, things. I think Rom's in the audience there, right? We're going to have some very specific information mm -hmm. put out. We, yes. The construction schedule will be forthcoming. Right yep. now, there's just a brief announcement that's on the website. Okay. Um, I know that we did. We brought it up a few months ago that we're going to put in, put up a link for them to be able to access that on our website. Is that still on the? Are we still plan to do that. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. So does the? Yeah, we'll be in constant communication with uh, with the folks downtown, and as soon as the dates are firmed for each stage, we'll be making that public. Okay. Awesome. With respect to the construction mitigation. Uh, like uh, maybe grant funding or some sort of funding. Anything I, that would help you. Yes. Right. I, I don't know of, of an answer just yet, but it gave me a few ideas. So let's uh, investigate a little bit further, whether okay. that be through the state of California or county or somebody. So we'll, we'll, we'll ask that question. Thank you for bringing that up. All right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. 
Is there anyone else who'd like to make a public comment? Superintendent of the day? Yes, is that what thank you. Right? you. I could be superintendent <laughs> of the day, the year. Uh, my name is Rhonda Fox, superintendent, Brawley Elementary School District. I just want to share with you tonight an update on the construction of our new middle school, Padilla Pace Middle School, named after two men from the Brawley community who served their community and their country in so many different ways. We are on track with our construction. Uh, we are anticipated to open in August of 2024. I would like to open an invitation if anyone would like to visit our new middle school to please contact me and I can uh, schedule some time with Mike Dickerson, my maintenance uh, manager, and he'll be able to take you on that tour. It's a beautiful school uh, where we will be having state-of-the-art science labs, a state-of-the-art maker space, um, the most beautiful cafeteria, multi-purpose room you've ever seen, and a room for our music program and our art program. We're really excited. I did want to thank the community for supplying us with mascot selections. We are moving on to step two of our mascot selection, in which our school site councils, our ELACs, and our students in grades five, six, and seven will be choosing the top ten names. We had over 205 responses from our parents, our students, and our community. Um, to me, one of the most hilarious responses were the, were the Padilla Pace Pickles. So we'll see where that goes in the ranking. <laughs> you're, also, you're a real pickle uh, there, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Pace Pickles. Yeah. I do want to thank you for uh, the time you spent with our students today. I mean, it was beyond measure. It's something they will never, ever forget. Uh, and one more comment, just to let you know that I am continuing to work with Chief Duran uh, and Tyler to hopefully partner with the City of Brawley in a boxing program for the students in Brawley Elementary School District. We've run into some state glitches, but I think together with Mr. Smearden and our legal counsel and the continued support we're receiving uh, from the city of Brawley, it's something we can bring to fruition. We truly believe it's a program that our students need, and we're more than excited to partner with um, PAL, with Chief Duran, who's been one of our most amazing partners at Brawley Elementary School District, and the city of Brawley. We're hoping by the middle of this year, we'll, we'll have some answers and we'll be able to bring that program to the students at Brawley Elementary You'll School be able District. to knock it out, I'm sure. We're hoping so. TKO for us, go. right? <laughs> thank you. Thank you again. Thank you very thank much. You. We appreciate you very much. And thank you for all your engagement. Mm -hmm. Thank you. All right. Anyone else who would like to make a public comment on any item not appearing on the agenda? <clears throat> Seeing none, we're going to move forward. Thank you very much. And uh, next item is the consent agenda. Items are approved by one motion. Council members or members of the public may request consent items be considered separately at a time determined by the mayor. Is there a motion to um, approve the consent agenda as written? So moved. There's a motion. Is there a second? No second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Next item is the city manager's report. Yes, a few items. Uh, Mondo gets them up on the board there. One quick announcement. Uh, this year, uh, our annual Veterans Day ceremony has been canceled uh, due to the date conflicting with the parade on Saturday, And so, but we hope to bring that back in the future. Um, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Castro asked that we get that out uh, announced today, so there you, that's the, that amount, announcement there. Next, okay, next we have the, the Imperial County Workforce Development Board wants to invite the community to a community conversation on Wednesday, December 6th at 5.30 at the Del Rio Community Center to talk about uh, jobs that are important to the community and how they can uh, help our economy grow. This will be posted on our uh, social medias and website to register for there. It's Again, it's December 6th, uh, Wednesday at Del Rio. And um, the third announcement is our annual 2023 Cattle Call Parade, November 11th, 9 a.m. As you can see up there, that's the route there in, uh, in red. Uh, chairs can be placed uh, no earlier than 6 a.m. on Friday. And a reminder, please do not block any access or sidewalks. And if they're out before that they're, and, and they're blocking traffic, foot traffic or, or, or vehicle traffic, they'll be, have to be uh, picked up and they can be reclaimed at the Brawley Public Works. 180 Southwestern Avenue on November 13th from 8 to 5, and this will also be posted. I think it might have went up today. And under my city manager report, uh, we'd like to, Chief Duran and uh, Sergeant Garcia would like to bring an update on some more readings on the noise ordinance and, and some uh, levels that they have have captured since the, our last meeting. All right, they're up here to make some noise. All right. Well, good evening, uh, members of the council, mayor, city manager, public. 
uh, Jimmy Gran Chief of Police, uh, Half Sergeant Michael Garcia with me. Uh, a couple of meetings ago, we were instructed to uh, proceed and do additional uh, uh, noise readings at 8.05 uh, in that general area. So we went ahead and did that. Uh, so we did some additional readings at spot 805, but we took it uh, a little bit further. So we did some readings of businesses that are very similar or they provide the same type of services as 805. So we did Inferno as well and Sophia Seafood and Grill because, uh, again, they are providing the same type of services. We get music there as well. So we wanted uh, to give the council a better report of how the other businesses are operating, what their noise levels are as well. So with that said, I'll let uh, Sergeant Garcia uh, go over the readings that he took this time. Thank you. He wants us to read the readings. There you go, bro. <laughs> you know what's in the song. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, City Council. So at the request of Chief Duran, I went out there and was got additional readings uh, this past week on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. The uh, locations were Spot 805, Inferno, and Sophia's Seafood and Grill. The dates were November 2nd between 9 p.m. 9, 9.08 p.m. And the reason for that day during that time was it was the Mega Mixer. And so Inferno <clears throat> closed right around 10 o'clock. And that's when they pretty much shut down their music just prior to that. And so this was when it was probably their loudest between that, that time frame when I was going out there. Also, Sophia's also had a live band going at that same time. And they, they think on the, actually, all three nights. Sophia's had a light band. All the Infernals and Spot 805 had a DJ. Uh, Sergeant Garcia, sorry to interrupt. Yes. The, the locations, well, what spots did you take those readings from? Like, in, inside, outside? No, outside. Directly outside. So in Inferno, I was about 50 feet in front of the business because that's where most of the music was projected to. Same thing for our Sophia's. I was across the street, roughly about the same distance. Gotcha. Thank you. And in regards to 805, that one, the same thing. I got readings from across the street. These are the readings for those days. So you see on Thursday, Inferno, there the average was 76.6 decibels. Uh, Sophia's was 76.9. So they were pretty close. Shortly thereafter, I went and got a reading from the parking lot over at Suda Plaza. So that you can see it was 50.1 off. And put it in perspective, both businesses are on plaza. So their music, when it's being projected, it's going to be projected either in a westerly direction away from Suda Plaza. Friday, went out there on Friday, November 3rd. Started with Suda Plaza. At that time, 805 was open. They were playing their music. And so was Suda Plaza. I mean, so was uh, Sophia's. And quickly, just to go back for Thursday, uh, you won't see Spot 805 there because they were closed on Thursday. So Friday, Suda Plaza from the parking lot, that average decibels was 57.6. Then I also got another reading from directly in front of it out on, along the street, and that was slightly higher, 61.9. Then I went out to spot 805, so North Curve, it was 79.1. Mm. And spot 805, I did get closer. I did get right in front of the business on the sidewalk directly in front of the entrance, and that one was 
And then after that, I went over to Sophia's. And again, same spot across the street. It was 81.9. On Saturday, I went back. This was after the uh, chili cook-off. Spot 805, same location directly in front at the entrance. Uh, decibels was 85. And then I went over to Suda Plaza, the parking lot. Was 56.6 .6, and then directly in front on the sidewalk of the building was 66.6. .6. No readings were obtained from inside the location. I did try to, there were some residents out there on Saturday and did try to get get uh, their compliance and allow me in. They did not want to assist and allow me inside to get any readings. So that's why I didn't have any readings inside the business or inside the building. In this last slide, this is the, the graph from Kellos or from OSHA. Looks like we hit the boiler room a couple of times, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so hopefully this uh, will give you a better perspective of uh, what is happening here on Main Street. Uh, now that we got a couple of uh, additional businesses there, I, again, they're similar in nature to a spot 805, and hopefully that will give you a better idea of uh, how to Thank you. Uh, go about with this information. So uh, I don't know if you have any questions at this yeah, point. I, I, I'm trying, I try to look and see if I know you kind of similar reports. How do these align, these averages align with, I know the previous readings. Are they kind of, are they very similar or are they higher or? They're similar. Okay. They're similar. There were, there were one or two nights from previous readings where spotty to five was a little bit higher. Mm -hmm. uh, but other than that, other than those few nights, most of the time, it's roughly the same. They're similar in range. I, I, you know, and I was going to ask the question with respect to like, uh, that, could you tell, was it like discernible, like where you could tell just even from your own ear, the different locations? Was it, I mean, you mentioned spot 805. Was that seem to be louder or, or I mean, I hate to put you on the spot, but I mean, just want to get that perspective. So it sounded, it did sound louder. However, when I got the readings, it, didn't seem that loud. I can tell you from comparing it, Sophia Seafood and Grill with the live band sounded a lot louder than oh. 805. Mm, interesting. Mm. Yeah, it's just hard <clears throat> to gauge where it's traveling, you know what I mean? Yes. So, very well. Are there any other questions from council? No, just uh, with respect to the grandfather law, uh, the grandfather clause, and how would it apply to these businesses that we were able, if we were to modify the sound ordinance? Um, perhaps when we come back, if you could let us know how that would work out. Sure. sure. Thank you. Any other questions, comments? No. Any direction or anything? Or is it just well, this, this, brought up as this is just a, it's a study session, right? Or it's just a, it's just a, a, a discussion. A big report. Yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. So, yeah. Sure. Come on up. Come on up, please. You know, and really the whole thing was um, we don't want to pin our, you know, see Dad Plaza against any business at sure. all. It's not really any business. It was just the city ordinance cut and dry. That was it. Right. You know what I mean? It's not pinned against anybody. Mm -hmm. Just an ordinance that's on the book that everybody follows and everybody can see. That's all we wanted. Sure. You know what I mean? We don't want to close no business or nothing. That's all we wanted. We don't care about any of that stuff or where the readings are anywhere else. Whatever the law says, that's all we want. And that's what it's we're that trying simple. to figure yeah. out where we're getting, you know, where we're right. getting there. So it just that, takes that's, what our, that's what our gripe was. That's, yeah, it's you. not anybody. It just happens to be they were the one that it was projecting towards sure. us. Not Inferno. That's the only reason why they were brought up. It's not to pin anybody against anybody. It was just to have an ordinance on the book like it should be. Right. That's, all I, that's all I wanted. Thank you. And no, we're clear on that. I mean, at this right. point, though, it's like it, it needs to be, you know, all encompassing, like we're dealing right. with everybody now. Yeah, so. where everybody can see yeah. what it is. And, thank you. Know. you. Thank you. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Appreciate thank it. You. Thank you for the input. And S Sergeant Garcia, it was good seeing you out that night as well. I saw you out there. You were working hard, so I appreciate you. Thank you.
All right. And so any other item from our city attorney, excuse me, from our city manager? No, no, sir, mayor. All right. Next item is a public hearing. Public hearing on application for funding and the execution of a grant agreement with amendments thereto from 2020. 2021 funding years of the state CDBG program presented by Rachel Fonseca Parks and Recreation Manager. Good evening members of the council, Rachel Fonseca Parks and Recreation Manager. So after receiving the bids that came in for the roof project, there is a $184,000 funding gap. The $184,000 funding gap is derived from the project taking two years to bid due to delays with design and CDBG application delays the need to apply a contingency for unforeseen issues to the project and inflation. The city has $133,910 in CDBG program income funds and $50,090 in general fund capital reserves that can be allocated to fund the gap. To allocate the CDBG funds to the roof project, a public hearing must be held to allow for the public to comment on the use of the program income funds and a resolution must be adopted to approve the CDBG application. I've spoken to the CDBG officials and they concur that this is a proper use of the funds and are awaiting the resolution so they can approve the application. Very well. All right, is there a motion to approve I, this? I just have a question. Or do we have to open, excuse me, public hearing? We have to open the public we hearing? Have to open Correct, open and comments. close. Okay, so we'll, can we talk about it first? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You can open it yeah, just want. real quick. Last time when I was reading it, uh, it, it I read the agenda, I read this, this item, and it was referring back to labor shortages. And uh, right now, you explain something a little different: the delay in the design. Who was responsible for the design, and how was it connected to the construction company that we were select we selected for this project? So, can you ask that again? Yes. So you said there was a delay, a two-year delay in design. Mm -hmm. So it took about six months for the engineering. It was supposed to be sixty days, but it took about six months for the engineering to be completed and then the CDBG application we ran into an issue with that and it took about six months for them to approve that so the original estimate was in 2021 and that was about a hundred thousand dollars less right right no, no and I understand inflation and labor costs uh, prevailing wage and you know we're not gonna pin that on the workers um, the reason for the delay in design uh, for 60 days was it's 180 um, I'm not quite sure. Um, I followed up and um, it was uh, delayed. Uh, how, how do we usually deal with that as far as compensation to those groups that, you know, they say they're going to do something in 60 days and they don't do it? You know, it's, it's contract specific on construction. I'm not sure I recall any in, uh, for design if there's a, a, it's not called penalties, liquid, liquidated damages. Yeah, gotcha. but, uh, but HCD was, I think, a longer holdout. And nothing was even moved until we made a call to Eddie Garcia's, Assemblymember Garcia's office. And then within weeks, it was, it was a, a, a magically approved. <laughs> and uh, so that was, that was a lesson learned for me. Next time, pick up the phone sooner to call our representatives. But, uh, I, um, and I, I don't recall, to, to be blunt, I don't recall about the delay in, in the design piece. But I do remember HCD because that was... Yeah. I was asking I, Rachel I every day, that. have we heard back, have we heard back, so. Yeah, but I definitely, we definitely can look into uh, that and bring back more well, details. I just, I just think it's important because these, these contracts were awarded, awarded so much money, it's time sensitive because of the cost of materials and labor, and if they take their time getting, you know, completing their task, then that's going to cost us more money. Uh, so anyways, that was just my concern. I, it wasn't clear based on, you know, from, uh, maybe I was just up too late last night. But well, it was a very complicated <laughs> project. But I rely on you guys. You guys are the experts. On, you guys are the smart ones. So anyways. If, if I can recall, the, the biggest delay was C, CDBG. Yeah, and I we experienced remember. the same thing with the pool. So unfortunately, it was the state. And as I think our city manager just said, we had, had to call in, right, for a little bit of an internal push. But um, I can see the combination of things. But just to clarify the, the fiscal impact again, this is um, um, per the resolution, we'll be able to um, um, tap in and use yes. CD, CDBG funds. For yes, uh, the CDBG official said that it's a proper use and they're just okay. waiting for the approval. I just want that clarification. Thank Fantastic. you. There's no other comments. I'll open up the public hearing at this time for public comment. If there's any? Any public comment on this topic? See none, I'm going to close the public hearing and I'm going to ask if there is a, let's see. Uh, the execution of grant. Is there, so what's the motion here, um, city 
I think, uh, don't you, your next then resolution. Then move on to okay, the Okay, so we'll just continue that on the regular business, just the action item? Okay. Yeah, so close the, the hearing. The, close the close hearing. the hearing, and then we're going to move on to regular business, and that is item 3C, discussion potential action to adopt resolution 2023, approving an application for funding, the execution of a grant agreement, and amendments thereto from 2020-2021 funding years of the state CDBG program. It's presented again, but it's... <laughs> basically the action item yes okay. requesting for council to adopt the resolution that approves the application for funding and the execution of the grant agreement and any amendments there too and a budget adjustment and the budget adjustment. budget adjustment but those are the following items am I correct the budget adjustment will mm -hmm. be in the next item mm -hmm. yes is there a motion to approve I'll make a, a motion for the first item as presented oh second there's a motion and a second all those in favor please say aye aye, aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Just item 3C for, for clarification. Yeah, that was item 3C. This is the now 3D, discussion potential action to adopt resolution 2023-awarding uh, a awarding a contract to Lettner Roofing Company for project number 2023-03, Line Center Re-Roofing Project. And uh, self-explanatory at this point. So, so you want to go? The city received two bids, and um, staff is recommending to council to authorize the award to Lettner because they're the lowest bid. And then also the items to approve the resolution to award the contract to Lettner for 509000 That is contingent upon CDBG approving the allocation of 133 authorized a $76,455 contingency, approve the use of the 50090 from the general fund capital reserves to close the gap, and authorize the city manager to execute all documents concerning the project. All right. Is there a motion to approve this item? I'll so move. There's a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a second. Any discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion carries. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is 3E, discussion potential action to approve the Chamber of Commerce for Greater Brawley and Brawley Catacol Queen Royalty Association's request related to the annual Ivy International Brisket Cookoff. Requested as follows, approval for, for closure of Main Street between North and South Plaza Streets, approval to waive street closure fees associated with the event, approval to allow the sale of alcohol during the event. Uh, this is presented by Rachel Fonseca. I would like to break up those into items E1, E2, and E3, please. E2 and 3, following those bullet points. Uh, is there a motion to approve E1? I'll make a motion. I'll second. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? That motion carries. Uh, item E2, approval to waive street closure fees associated with the event. Is there a motion to approve that item? I'll make a motion to approve item E2. There's a motion. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Item uh, E3, approval to allow the sale of alcohol during the event. Is there a motion to approve that item? I'll motion to approve. There's a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. There's a motion and a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Nay. Thank you. Motion carries. All right. And I uh, hope I'm not speaking out of turn, but uh, Council Member Hamby, your, your objection is just personal objection, right? Yeah I, yeah. I mean, we've gone over it over the years, but... Right. Uh, Essentially, um, it, I don't think any of us have to leave our personal convictions at the door when we come in and make a vote because we are citizens as well. But beyond that, uh, we are tasked with making decisions that are for the best of our community um, in, our, in our community's best interest. And so my personal view and my political view is that um, the consumption, the sale of alcohol is not in our best interest because it adds a burden to our law enforcement. You know, usually there's there's added law enforcement that has to take place for an event that includes alcohol sales. Um, there's, you know, I was a I was a volunteer firefighter for two decades, and witnessed a lot of horrific accidents due to drunk driving. So there's that aspect of it. it it's um, it causes a lot of pain and suffering for for people who are in those situations. And very often, it's the the person who was drunk driving is not injured or not horrifically injured the other parties are killed or injured horrifically um, there's a lot of uh, domestic violence that's associated with alcoholism or alcohol consumption so all of that 
is what's on my mind when we have a vote like this. So it's not something that I sure. that I vote nay on arbitrarily, but it, it all, all right. has a foundation. So thank you. Thank I, I, I appreciate you, Mayor, uh, giving me the opportunity to Certainly. I appreciate that. that very much. Thank you for bringing me down like that. Sure. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just teasing. <laughs> I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> no, that's good. Yeah, yeah, right? very responsive, ladies. Yeah, absolutely. And, and so we're doing that. And just a, a further point, we are celebrating responsibly. I mean, uh, Chief is out there. They're enforcing they have DUI checkpoints and, you know, it's just um, he did have some stops he mentioned to me and it actually was not related to alcohol believe it or not huh? they were um, they were uh, some non-licensed drivers and some under the influence of uh, marijuana mm -hmm. so um, you know but uh, DUI nonetheless so I cannot uh, I mean I've never been pulled over for being under the influence I did get pulled over without a license when I was 15 years old there though, we go so I have to ah. well you're to from that. Westmoreland so I am that's, from Westmoreland I knew you were in Westmoreland that's how we roll in I knew you were perfect I knew right. you were yeah. far from perfect <laughs> you were flawed right yeah. wow this yeah. is statutes of limitation <laughs> right I, I mean in all fairness you were driving a tractor so no <laughs> You know? I wish I could say right. that. No, it was the it was the yeah. family right. vehicle, and I did get a, a ride right. home in a police yeah. car. So, <laughs> right, well, thank you for the clarification. Sure. We appreciate that. All right. So, thank you. These are my confessions. <laughs> you know, no wonder you don't drink. It's no, you know, it's like you'd reveal too many things. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So. Discussion and potential action to approve Ordinance 2023-02, second reading, to modify the existing contract with the California Public Employees Retirement System, CalPERS, presented by Shirley Bonias, Human Resources Risk Management Administrator. Honorable Mayor, what a wonderful meeting with those young people. That was wonderful. Council members, public. Shirley Bonias, HR Administrator, in front of you is the second reading uh, to amend the contract with our retirement company CalPERS. The second reading will eliminate, if approved, will eliminate our 1,000 hour exclusion, our temporary staffing as of December 8th, we'll have to start counting hours, and if a temporary staff person who's not currently in CalPERS actually works more, then 1,000 hours, they'll have to be added into the retirement system. And there's no pulling them back out after you add them in. Mm -hmm. Now, we do get temporary staffing from time to time. They're already members with the school district. So they're already members. So we have to put them in. But this would eliminate our 1,000-hour exclusion. Again, just to refresh council's memory, the reason why this item has been... Um, recommended by CalPERS to do because there was a government code change in 2019. And the city has successfully challenged that. Um, we are now at the point where we can't challenge it anymore. Mm -hmm. So it is the recommendation to approve or approve the second reading. We did get two exclusions. Library aid and library page did remain excluded. So that helps out with our library um, budget. Any, any questions? I'm here to answer them to the best just, of my ability. Uh, just a, a clarification. Of, uh, normally, a second reading would have been under consent, but CalPERS requires that it's uh, on regular business as a requirement of CalPERS to have it on. Uh, so this is not new information in case the uh, public is wondering. Didn't they just talk about this last time? So, right. Yeah. Yep. CalPERS has a lot of requirements. Oh, huh? boy. They, yep. Right. Yes, sir. Right. All right, is there a motion to, to approve the item? I'll motion to approve item. Mm -hmm. uh, There's a motion. Is there a second? In item 3F. Yes. Is there a second on that? Second. Yes. Okay, second. Uh, there's a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And the next item is um, 7G, discussion potential action. Excuse me. Uh, here we go, right? Here we go. G? Yeah, so, okay. Uh, G, discussion potential action to amend November City Council meeting schedule in respect to upcoming holiday and staff schedules presented by Tyler Salcido. 3G. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, after the last meeting, 
Uh, Council Member Wharton and Mayor Nova had asked to bring this back for a discussion. Uh, our next meeting, regular scheduled meeting, is November 21st, of, uh, which it happens to uh, this year be on Thanksgiving week, a short week. So uh, uh, we are putting it on the table to see if there's any interest in moving, postponing, et cetera. I mean, we could, it looks fine that we can move it over to postpone it one week. I mean, I think you, you your recommendation would be best. Um, is there, is there any there, opposition yeah. to move it to the 28th? No, no, I was just going to ask, is there any kind of forecast as far as number of items, um, number of items timely items, et cetera? What we discussed with the uh, executive team is we were planning to make sure that Anything that was needed that was timely would be on this one mm -hmm. in anticipation of uh, the next regular meeting, uh, December 5th. Is there any thought that but we just I, consider I, I, December 5th? And uh, I think that's a busy week, too. Right? Is there yeah. any objection to that? Um, if we moved? No? no? No, no. All right. Well, then if it that doesn't overburden, if it doesn't overburden staff to, Let, to let's, skip that. Let's do that, then. Why don't we move the meeting to December 5th? And... Uh, with it's a regular meeting. Regular meeting. Uh, yeah. Well, excuse me. Yeah. Uh, we just we we uh, just can't the twenty first. Yeah. yeah. All right. That's direction. Next item on the agenda: is study session of potential amendments to the city municipal code articles. What is that, Donnie? Read that for me. What is that number? Fourteen. Fourteen. Yeah. Okay. Fourteen. Excuse me. Uh, article fourteen signs <laughs> presented by Cynthia Mancha, consultant city planner. I, I need smarter people, people around me. So. Yeah. I'm glad somebody else took care Some of the Roman numeral. Good. <laughs> you know, it's easier just to write a number. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. We'll consider that in the amendment, right? uh, yeah. just remembering the no right? Roman numerals. Right. Par parenthetical. Yeah. Right? Yeah, that was a trick question. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council Members. Uh, I am going to present, I included some red line uh, I, to the article Article 14 of the Zoning Municipal Code. Um, and the reason that uh, we are proposing these changes to the Municipal Code are a couple. Uh, we've received zoning complaints for temporary signs that been, have been installed in our um, residential areas, as well as, let me see here. So uh, the, the, the ordinance guides the rules of how residents and, and the city as well uh, installs or how they maintain temporary and permanent signs. The last time that the, there has been a revision to this ordinance was in 2008. Uh, there is a little bit of uh, clarity that is needed and by making these revisions to the zoning or uh, to the zoning ordinance we hope to establish those clarifications. We had received zoning complaints as well as uh, signs interpretation of the zoning code where temporary signs were being installed for more permanent uh, use. And uh, when we evaluated the, the uh, violation, the, the, what is it called, the zoning violation, we came to the conclusion that there was some uh, there, there was some lack of clarity and the interpretation of how the zoning code was being used was allowing that, that person to install a temporary sign and it was being installed as a more permanent, but it looked uh, unsafe and also, um, so we were able to, to get that rectified from a safety concern, but there definitely needs to be some clarification to this ordinance, uh, especially since it was approved in 2008 a lot has uh, changed since 2000 since 2008 so this actually breaks down to two separate sections right we're talking about electronic signs and are we at that item or oh, temporary sure. signs uh, so we're dealing with one of the sections right now right correct so so the temporary signs is uh the 27.218 um 27.2 so it defines, redefines the purpose or adds a little bit more purpose, uh, clarification to the purpose of the zoning ordinance, as well as adds a little bit more clarification to the definitions. And then we have also received some uh, constituent feedback regarding our temporary signs. There is some government code and public business business and professional code rules that apply to political signs that do allow for the complaints that were coming in where the length and duration 
of the installed signs and uh, the length and duration of how we allow the signs to be installed and when and how they're removed is guided by government code and uh, business and profession code. So that is also a section within the uh, zoning code that we're looking to revise and it's 27218B and uh, government code and business code provide provisions for, for the length as well as the, the amount of time that the that the signs can be allowed to be ins be installed for and how long they remain after the election. So right now on temporary signs, we're looking at 27.218, right? Correct. And item A, and we're referring to item B. The reason I'm looking at is because some of the signs, like for example, a lot of the realtors, uh, they put up the temporary signs like on empty lots or whatnot, and those are larger signs. They're up a little bit on four by fours. Um, does, what did a, this apply to that as well? No, so the the temporary signs, well, it does have a provision for commercial zones, but uh, the revision that's being made for the more permanent looking structures is for the residential areas. But the commercial zones will still be allowed a little bit uh, larger sign and concession for, for larger sign, just because the footprint of the the frontage or the, the size of the property is much larger. And I also looked at section B, political campaign sign. I mean, I don't know that we've even had a problem with it. And I was prepared to ask for something a little more, you know, for example, like primaries uh, to allow the beginning, be, to allow folks to begin putting up signs around uh, uh, Memorial Day weekend, um, Labor Day weekend, uh, which was shortened until about like 75 days. But as far as the primaries, I mean, I'm looking at something that's really, I just thought back, something really interesting. And all of us know this, and we've done this grassroots uh, campaigning and whatnot. And we know that there are candidates here that have a lot, a lot, a lot of money, and they'll pour, they hire a lot of people. And there's some candidates like us that had to go around doing this on our own and needed an extended period because we work a full-time job. We have the responsibilities, and we take the little weekends that we have a little bit of time to go do all this stuff. So I'm not so sure that I want to limit it to 90 days. I kind of find we're leaving it at 120. <laughs> And, and the minimum is 90 days uh, based per, per government code and business and profession code, but uh, we, it is a city ordinance, so it is to the discretion of the, the city have, council. Have we had a problem with it? We have received complaints. We even received, uh, that, that is actually um, how the- Why well, it started here. How it uh -huh. started here. Um, and then once reviewing the, the, uh, the zoning code, there was an opportunity to revise and add additional. Um, if we were going to tighten it up a little bit, yeah. exactly. Right. If we were going to make amendments, uh, make the amendments amendments at once. So, so we have received. We even received um, uh, very stringent text and very written out text of exactly what they wanted the city to to include. But we included what was uh, based on government code and business and profession code. What were some of the suggestions that you received? That we fine um, and uh, that the uh, it, it was a lot less uh, days of the actual installation as well as giving when they can be set up and when they can be removed. What was the suggestion? Um, I, I, I can't remember, but it, it definitely was less than the... Like 60 days? It was like 60 days or, or something like that. But I don't, don't quote me on it. I don't remember it off of the top of my head, but it was less than the legally allowed... Um, uh, more stringent. More stringent. stringent. What does the county say? Is it 90? 90. 90. It's, it's, it's the county has similar. 90. And then, I think 90 is being suggested over 120. Yes. Over 120. Okay. Yeah. At, 120. I mean, that's 90. fine. Okay. 90 is a long time anyway. It is. I, it is. Know. It is. But I was just looking like at the big primary, some of the bigger races, and some of the candidates get into it. You know, some candidates, you know, throw in $100,000 of their own money. Some, some of us throw in five. <laughs> you know, yeah. and you need the time. And I think it creates an unfair advantage to those wealthy candidates. Uh, you know, in my opinion, they hire some folks to go and put up all their stuff. But 90 days, I mean, it's up to you guys. 90 days seems like plenty of time. Most of us, at least, we don't start until, uh, uh, again, Labor Day weekend and anyways, so. Any co comments from uh, the city council on this topic with respect to the, to the days? I don't even. I don't you know. have an issue with that suggestion. I think maybe if the tightening, if it's maybe the recommendation, I know this is a study session of, of staff thinks that uh, that'll mitigate not only, you know, I, again, I don't know. Um, often when we get complaints, we don't know is this one or two people or is this you know, right. yeah. a wider swath? Right. Right. One individual trying to control local elections. Right. That's what it comes, comes coming down to. It sounds like somebody's trying to control uh, how, we, how we handle our elections here in the city of Brawley. And it's probably one person or two, 
And so uh, if this matches what the county has and the recommendation of staff gets us within the state guidelines as well, yeah. I mean, let's just if do anything, it. If anything, maybe 15 to 21 days for the removal just because that takes time. And if you're working, and if you're working, you know, yeah. it's a Tuesday, then Wednesday, <laughs> Thursday, Friday, you're probably working. And, you know, you're tired. I mean, I honestly, I'd like to extend that 15 to even just 21. That's three weekends or three weeks to get a sign down. I just... I, mean, I think most yeah. people put them down anyway. Like yeah, quick we turn, you know, we so. take them yeah. all over, just, like yeah. oh, no. over just, that week. Yeah, as far as the ninety, I think the nineties. And uh, business and professions code says uh, ten days removal, and then civil code says fifteen days. So uh, we went with the the greater amount of days to remove. That works. But, that works. So so, uh, but twenty one days. Um, or, or, or 15 days. Yeah, what, so if you lose the election, you get them down in two days. I get them down. Yeah. I get them down. I get them down that same night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't no worries. <laughs> <laughs> you win. It's like yeah. 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 Uh, the, the last revision to the um, sign ordinance is recommendation is looking at outdoor uh, advertising section 27215 and the city is experiencing a great interest in commercial development on the east side of town with that interest has also come uh, opportunities for the city to engage in uh, different revenue source activities and one of those activities that has been proposed is um, revenue from advertising or from electronic billboards along uh, the that, that area of development um, and uh, so this is the Brawley zoning map uh, big picture the items in red or the parcels in red are commercial zones and the, the proposed changes for the electronic billboard signs um, would be in this area that is in a green. So this is uh, State Highway mm -hmm. 111 Main Street here. Um, this down here is the La Paloma, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, Rancho Porter. This is Rancho mm -hmm. Porter, Porter here. But uh, it hasn't been fully subdivided, but the proposed map has this area here as commercial development, mm -hmm. and this here is commercial development. Um, the ordinance is still very, uh, it, it's in preliminary. We still are working through the, the details of it, but uh, we would allow if, if the zoning ordinance is amended um, through a planning commission approval and application process, receipt uh, of an application receipt of the plans, um, review for all the standards that are identified in um, including schematics to scale, uh, look, design, um, and uh, and then through the city council uh, going through a, a development uh, agreement process for for establishing the the parameters of, of allowing um, the electronic billboard and for now the footprint would be here within a thousand five hundred feet of highway 111 main street 78 um, and only on commercial parcels I have no issues with that. that would, so trying that, to figure that, it out. No. That would be an optimal area. For yeah. Right. Yeah. And so it's, I, so I was reading this until this was very confusing, but it makes sense. And in this uh, city managers reviewed it. I mean, I think it. it but we have an opportunity. I, I took this study session reading, obviously, mainly the amendments. Yes. Um, that we have an opportunity to still come back, right? Um, well, the goal was here is to throw you out yeah. our ideas, and yeah. then if we get direction to even consider this, we'd bring it back with some proposed changes and, that and you would officially adopt. For, yeah. Correct. It, it would have to be. Uh, it's, it's an ordinance, so it has to be amended by an ordinance. Yeah, it'd be right. first and second reading. There, yeah. all go kinds of. Right. It's got to go so, through the process. Yeah. This is just yeah. their suggestions at yeah. this point. Any objection to the suggestions that they're making? I have none. None. No, no, I don't. Not there. I mean, I don't see it unless there's something else that we're missing, but I don't see it. So. And uh, in reading through the the uh, initial draft, uh, the ordinance does seem once you picture and visualize the location, it makes a little bit more sense, but when you mm -hmm. read through it, it doesn't really quite make sense. So uh, maybe I might consider, or if uh, adding either APNs or adding this little diagram to sure. the amended ordinance so that there's a clear direction 
of what's included and what's of not, what's right? Where what's you not. can and can't. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. That would be clear. That would be that way. We don't have an issue later, right? Yeah. Because yeah. the language is kind of like right. the, where, what are we, what area are we talking about? Right. Does it address um, like sign brightness? Is there like a gauge for how bright these signs are? Yeah. So there's a, an actual government code that. Uh, guides the, the installation of outdoor signage, which also includes um, lumens and, and what's mm. allowed and not allowed. And included in the ordinance draft is that um, if it malfunctions, that it automatically goes to a black, a black screen as opposed to like flashing, flashing flickering. or flickering, <laughs> yeah. um, as well as identifying uh, when cars are driving. So, so that would be part of the Everything development uh, process and their site submittal and uh, application process through a CUP. Uh, conditional use permit and since it is a small footprint area um, it would go through a conditional use permit application and the Planning Commission would have the ability to determine um, hey we already have five that's excessive already mm -hmm. or we already have two or three and, and that's excessive we might define that a little bit more and, and limit the number of them um, but that that's still to be uh, or the distance between maybe or the distance between minimum them as distance well. between them. But there are some really neat ones uh, that I that I was seeing and doing research for this uh, sign ordinance that it's the gas station and within the gas station they actually just have like a it's not a billboard sign like we typically imagine with the monopole and and a big big sign it's uh, the actual leaderboard or the the one that where they, they display the sales and it actually has a display area for. For, um, so in considering you see them on, uh, you know, going towards Coachella Valley, you'll see those types. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So, so in, in considering that type of display, um, if there's a gas station right across from from each other, uh, maybe limiting it to five wouldn't make sense because it's not the footprint is not as intrusive or as invasive. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, we're considering this as a CUP process and the development agreement to be approved through the uh, city council. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All right. Thank you. So I think you have your direction, right, which is to follow your recommendations at this point and bring them back more formalized? You got it. And okay. we will be working with our, our city attorney to make sure that we're following all the all the government code for uh, for for signs and, and city ordinance uh, approval and adoption. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I do appreciate making it easier for us to read it, too, striking out the old language and highlighting. Last time we did this, there was none of that. <laughs> I was like, it had me really confused. I appreciate it. You needed a sign to point you to the right place? Or? Yeah. <laughs> no, I just couldn't figure it out, honestly. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. So the next item is informational reports, monthly staffing reports for November 2023. That's for your, in the backup material. It's for your viewing pleasure. Uh, we'll go on to city council member reports, and we'll start with Council Member Luke Hamby. Thank you, Mayor George Nava. Uh, just real quickly, you know, we're, we're getting to that time of year where it's nice to be outside. There's a lot of activities, and I just want to commend our city staff and employees for all the hard work they're doing to um, spruce up the city for cattle call, but also just, you know, for this last part of the year, it's, it's really nice to see the activity. And beyond that, um, I, I get phone calls or, you know, texts from different... Uh, citizens that with with their concerns or their requests and I, I will forward those to the right people in the right departments I've had some interaction with PD with Parks and Rec um, with requests and uh, they're just so quick to it's a rapid response they quickly respond and and solve the problem it it makes me look good but it, you know it makes our city look good and uh, the different citizens really appreciate um, you know getting their their concerns taken care of um, along with all the activity there's a lot of music events and I'm a musician so um, I just want to invite everyone to uh, a concert in El Centro that I'm performing in it's a Christmas concert on November 30th at Christ Community Church but it's a collaboration between Imperial Valley Symphony and um, string quartet and the master chorale so there's a choir there's um, instruments and it's going to be really beautiful I just completed a couple concerts over this past weekend with the Imperial Valley Symphony and um, very well attended. So people are just wanting to, to be out and about and enjoying the weather and, and the different uh, cultural offerings that we have. And um, Superintendent Fox mentioned at the new school here uh, a building for arts and, and music. And um, I, it's just it's near and dear to my heart, but I, I recognize the academic benefits of having arts programs because it's um, I know for myself as a kid learning music, it was like learning another language. 
And when you can learn another language as a kid, you know, a second language, it just makes it easier to learn everything and, and more languages as you, as you grow. So um, I'm glad to hear that the, that the new school uh, will have that available. And um, it's, it, it's cultural enrichment. It's, um, you know, it makes our, our quality of life better in our area. So I just want to invite everyone to that concert and, and encourage that kind of activity. Um, let's see here. Uh, I was able to attend um, a couple of events in the past couple of weeks, uh, street openings for Legion Road and Western and um, Wildcat Drive. That's very significant for um, traffic and, and commercial activity in our area. Um, and uh, got to attend an appreciation lunch that the Chamber of Commerce put on for our, our city employees. And so we're very grateful to the Chamber for putting that on for us. Very good tacos um, from the Jumping Bean. And uh, the pep rally for the Bell Game. And Mayor Nava really uh, put himself out there with a lot of energy to encourage um, our team to play hard, which they did. Um, and of course, it's rodeo season, and, and each year I'm, I get to uh, set up a ramp at the, uh, at the grandstands at, at the arena at Cattle Call uh, for the mini rodeo, which happens tomorrow. Every, every week on Wednesday before the, the rodeo weekend, they bring in kids, um, some with special needs, to be able to watch a you know, small version of the rodeo with kids participating in the rodeo as well. And so I get to build this ramp so that, that uh, usually it's military uh, members that will push kids in wheelchairs up the ramp to be able to sit in the grandstand. So um, I want to uh, thank Fire Chief Mike York for allowing me to borrow his trailer to uh, <laughs> to transport that ramp. So that's it for my report. What thank time you. Is that tomorrow? Uh, I don't know what time the mini audio starts. I think it's a, it, it's nine or ten, maybe. It's nine. 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 Okay. Ten. It's nine. Is it ten? Oh. ten. Well, we're leaving at nine. That's okay. Oh, <laughs> there we go. Yeah, school buses. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. I had heard both. So yeah. I yeah. Right, right. right. So 10 a.m. All right. Well, thank you very much, Council Member Hamby. Council Member Gil Revelor. Yeah, and uh, I went to a bow game. And shout out to the, you know, the Coach Rick and uh, Coach Van Diver. It was a hell of a game. They played tough. Um, man. Uh, but, you know, since you had to hire a head coach, athletic director from Brawley, so, you know, yeah, that's how they that's right. Had. That's you what know, it took. that's what they had to do, you know, so shout out, shout out to them. Uh, you know, we recently, recently attended uh, A&R Construction, celebrated 35 years of business. Um, I'm not sure if perhaps recognize them through resolution, if the council, if that'd be perfectly fine. I think a business, 35 years in our town is commendable. I know recently Vessi and Company celebrated 100 years and different governing bodies recognize them. So I'm not sure if the council would be interested in me draft up a resolution for recognizing a business such as theirs for 35 years in our town, employing hundreds of people throughout that time. Sure. Cool. Cool. And I owe, I owe, now I owe you a resolution for the flag football that Mayor Pro Tem, so um, I'll work on that. I also want to give a quick shout out to Johnny on Wheels, Brawley resident and ADA advocate. I really recently spoke with him. He's doing much better, receiving physical therapy, and so we do look forward to having him return. Um, one more thing, you know, I've often been reminded that as a city councilman, I should direct my focus towards local issues. And I believe the term used one point was stay in our lane. And I have no intention of anything further than these words I'm about to share, no resolution or agenda items, but I take this opportunity exercising my freedom of speech in this platform that I have the privilege of utilizing to discuss ideas in this public forum that is a people city council meeting, as well as in the spirit of our item earlier, encouraging our youth to use their voice. I understand the saying, all politics is local. However, it is undeniable that the actions of Congress and our president aren't just whispers in the distant corridors of power of Washington, D.C., but rather reverberate down to every citizen touching and in some cases directly impacting our daily lives, especially when we talk about inflation and our nation's growing debt. And whether we're talking about local issues like ordinances or zonings or fees, our local happenings are but a stroke of the national canvas that is America. What we saw recently in Congress leading up to the election of the Speaker of the House was chaos filled with multiple rounds of voting, drama, ego, and politics, similar to every elected governing body, ours included. So when the dust settled and a vote was taken and passed, I, like many across our city, county, and country, was eager to hear what the newly elected Speaker of the House had to declare in his first speech and his plans for us, the American people. You know, his plan to put America first. 
I was hoping to hear if his priority and first order of, order of business would be addressing our domestic opioid and addiction crisis, perhaps securing funds to assist our local governments with infrastructure or the growing pension debt, maybe investments into security for our U.S.-Mexico border or technologies to help alleviate the long waits and pollution that is shared by both us and our southern neighbors, maybe combating the inflation that is making it harder and harder for those like ourselves and the working class just to fill up our gas tank or buy milk and eggs. Or even his plans to, for Congress to address the homelessness crisis that is becoming rampant in both big cities and small towns like ours. But no, his priority was none of those, nor any issue directly pertaining to us, the American people. Instead, his first order of business was, pro to, was to prioritize sending vast amounts of our hard-earned American tax dollars overseas to another foreign country to fund yet another distant war. How incredibly rare for a D.C. politician to be so eager to send our tax dollars thousands of miles away for a proxy war instead of utilizing them here for the myriad of issues that we Americans face on a daily basis. But we, as Americans, perhaps should be accustomed to it when you simply look back at the last half century regarding the funding of these endless foreign wars where quick victories were promised, yet long, sorrowful entanglements were seemingly the only outcome which so many brave American soldiers and innocent lives impacted and lost along the way. Halloween was just a little over a week ago where I know many dressed up as a peace and love hippies from the 60s and 70s. And although we laugh at them now, maybe they were onto something regarding war. And speaking of war, I do want to state this. I stand in solidarity with my brother from the city of India, Mayor Oscar Ortiz, in calling for a de-escalation and ceasefire in the Israeli Hamas conflict is the utmost urgency that we prevent the escalation of hostilities into what could possibly turn into World War III. Just as we would mourn the loss of any innocent American life, we must also remember that every innocent bystander caught up in this devastating conflict is someone's father, mother, child, or friend. Innocent lives are invaluable, and as was frequently said just a few years ago, albeit for different reasons and one that I'm consciously aware of co-opting, all lives matter especially considering the videos I've seen of innocent Israeli and Palestinian children suffering from the devastating impacts of this war. And I'll conclude with this. Let our White House and Congress come together in the mission to end Hamas's brutality and also take into consideration holding the Israeli government accountable while also recognizing the safety of the Jewish people and the freedom and protection of the Palestinian, Palestinians are not mutually exclusive ideals. And to be clear, to champion humanity is not to espouse anti-Semitism. We must strive for a future where dialogue supersedes division, where empathy overcomes enmity, and where the olive branch of peace is held higher than the weapon of war. Thank you. All right. Uh, Council Member Wharton. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, chili cook-off. Always great to see, and I think it was coupled with a rib cook-off, too, so there was plenty to eat and enjoy, but uh, um, great weather, wonderful time out there, and I know many of us out there engaged. Um, and along with that, uh, Mr. Mayor, I want to extend one more last time. Um, today was a wonderful day with Council uh, uh, of the Day and Mayor of the Day, and I just want to slip in a quick thank you to Reach as well, because um, the kids did sure. make it over there. They watched the helicopter, unfortunately had to fly away, but maybe fortunate for the patient that it was going to go serve. Um, but they got a nice uh, debrief um, from our, our remaining flight nurses and staff. So um, again, just a quick shout out to them. And uh, speaking of quick, quick quack, I had to say that um, slowly. <laughs> quick, quick, quack. Um, uh, uh, Mayor, you made the, qu the, the comments, but I'm sure you'll take it from there. One of the principles of that uh, organization, quite impressive, their values, their, Absolutely. Um, their, their ethics, and kind of their true north of how they operate and run their business. And um, to me, just the, a comment I want to make there, it was really exciting to see a pretty robust staff. I want to say that was a few dozen at least right. um, that they did hire. So. Um, as always, these job, um, these um, what appear to be quality jobs with a quality organization um, get a lot of uh, uh, what I saw um, folks um, from around the valley as well as from Brawley uh, 
um, some great employment. So looking forward to see their success. Looking forward to Cattle Call and everything. And one last thing, I, I don't do this often, but today is a little bit of a shout out. I've been busy, of, of course, uh, Mr. Mayor, with the uh, city and work, but uh, it is my wife's birthday, so I want to wish her a happy birthday. Happy birthday, happy birthday. Susan. Um, yeah. I did get a text message and it had a glass of wine involved uh -oh, in it. Oh, there so we go. I'm going to try to make it home after this meeting, so uh, happy birthday. Susie. Happy birthday That's to it. Susie. And, uh, you know, they did also make a very significant donation at Quick Quack, and that was a uh, like four thousand dollars to help a, a local family. So, a local family yeah. and sure. Yep. Yeah, that's oh. great. Thank you, Mayor Burton. Guest yeah. room. Yeah, yeah, no, thank you, uh, Mayor Nava. Uh, you know what? I, I, I gotta say, it's like usually I give uh, Councilmember Revel a hard time, and I'm not gonna get into the issue myself, but I do commend you for speaking your mind. It is a platform that was given to us by the people, and we we should use it as as we feel is is right, right. And so, you know, regardless of how I feel on, about that issue. So but this week, we're uh, referring back to war and whatnot. Uh, first, let me get back on my agenda, and then I'll refer back a little more to that. Uh, I want to thank staff for all their hard work. It's a super busy week. Uh, I was out of town most of last week, missed a lot of the stuff that was going on. And I know that um, I was approached by a few folks, and uh, I do know that the city's been working extremely hard since uh, last week and continue this week, right? When do you guys slow down this Tyler, you guys, you guys don't slow <laughs> down, right? <laughs> slow um, so that, yeah. <laughs> when I retire, yeah, retire. Exactly my point. You know, I pull out, I leave Brawley sometimes around 5 in the morning, and I might, like, I think, sometimes I think that you and Tommy are racing each other to get to the office, and, <laughs> and that's all the staff. That's no joke. I mean, seriously, like, it's, it's a lot of hard work, and I asked them that specifically because people complain want to complain and it feels like this is a thankless job sometimes all we get is complaints so thank you for what you put on today uh, mayor now that I, I was rewarding in many many ways even though i had nothing to do with that <laughs> it was a pleasure to sit here and uh, have the children up here but um but yeah staff is working really 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 hard with everything that comes up and you just never know right uh i do want to report that we finally uh i've been working on a business in central mexico for approximately a year it's a craft brewery. It doesn't seem like much. We put in a good amount of money. Uh, we put in a lot of work. I've been visiting that area quite a bit. It's in, uh, a market that's you know kind of coming up in that region. And so we're early, in early. And the hope is that that beer will eventually be sold here in the city of Brawley. And uh, I, I get it. Uh, there's opposition to that. But if you do it responsibly, it's something that we can do. I did try. I'm blanking out. Ugh, gentleman in the back. I did try to rent one of his buildings. And I'm blanking out with your name right now. Tony, <laughs> Sorry. I have your, I have his number and everything. I just you know I get a little nervous when I'm up here. Uh, and I did try about three years ago, right, to look at one of your buildings, and we looked at all the regulations and requirements here. And we do want to brew our our, our craft beer here, and in Brawley, and will eventually come here. Um, we just needed that start, and uh, and I think we're almost there. We we opened up last week, and that's why I was out of town. And uh, finally, it was uh, Dia de los Muertos, November 1st, or it's like November 2nd. So we got to enjoy the festivities out there. I do want to thank everybody who's working on the uh, Catacall Week. It's my favorite week of the year by far. I love it. I love it more than Christmas itself. Um, mariachi night, my favorite night of the week. I want to thank Mr. Max Reyes, and hopefully I think we'll be visiting him tomorrow, right, Mr. Mayor? Uh, we, we do want to thank the folks, uh, you know, that attend every year. The event has gotten bigger and bigger. I remember that I actually got up on stage, and I knew that uh, right then that I, I, w I didn't have a future in, in, in a singing career. So I was about 16 years old. I grabbed the mic, sang a song, and I was in that's it. That was what my last. What song was it? Do you remember? Yeah, I'm Botas de Charro by okay. Vicente Fernandez. You want to give us a little example? No. Of that? <laughs> no, no, that was the last time. No, no, no. We are done with that. <laughs> that was it. You, you retired. So, Botas de Charro. Uh, yeah, I remember it. Cause I remember it because I, I got the wrong key. Like, I was off key. And then the second part of the song, I killed it. So I, I might have had a future in it, but right. yeah, whatever. <laughs> so, right. Anyways, uh, I'd like to remind folks that we do have the Veterans Day walk this Friday, and I'm just going to look up the information real quick. Um, and it starts here in Brawley. Thank you, Mayor Nava. You always help us out with this uh, by providing transportation or helping us connect with uh, Imperial County uh ICTC, yep. uh, uh, and then we the transport takes the folks from here. Uh, this year, we're going to start off at the Alks at 7 a.m. on Friday, on November 10th, uh, and we kick off the walk at 7:30 in Westmoreland. Um, so 161 South Plaza at 7 a.m. I hope to see you guys all there. It is, by the way, uh, the Marine Corps birthday. 
Um, and so if you see a Marine, um, make sure you hug them and kiss them. It's our birthday. We celebrate it. We have a few in the room. They know what I'm talking about. Um, I also want to thank uh, Mr. Daniel Nunez for the Veterans Day ceremony that he's putting on. He's organized in the Broadway Union High School District. It'll be this November 9th. Uh, a couple of our, our, our folks here will be there as well, the mayor and then Mr. Donnie Warren, who is also, also a veteran. Um, and I want to wish every Marine and every veteran, every Marine a happy birthday and every veteran a happy Veterans Day. Can the veterans, like in the audience, please stand up? Come on, guys. Don't be shy. We got at least two of them. Of so thank you for your service <laughs> and, and it means a lot and I'll, and I'll address that issue real quick because I, I did serve in, in a war and, and and I thank God every day that I, I don't have on my conscience I never I didn't kill anyone not directly anyways but um, and I don't live with that on my on my mind war is an ugly thing war is ugly war is ugly wherever it comes wherever it goes and I, I advocate against it but sometimes it's necessary to protect, especially these freedoms and this democracy that we live in. So I'm very grateful to all of our veterans, those that came before, those who will be coming after. And I hope that we never again have to fight another war. But hey, if I got to lace up my bootstraps again, I'll do it. Um, but I do want to thank all of you and, um, and I thank every veteran uh, because it is because we flex those muscles uh, that we live in this country where we, uh, we get to express how we feel and, and practice all these rights that we have. So thank you. That's all I have. Thank you, Mayor President Gester. All right. I'll keep it as brief as I can, but there was a lot of things that are uh, taking place over the past couple of weeks. I do want to thank all of staff and all of you for being out here. Um, but staff in particular, you guys are working really hard always, and that is um, very much appreciated, and it's making a tremendous impact and difference in our community. So. Did have, and I thank staff, of course, and everyone else who took part, to include council. But the opening and the developer, opening of Legion, Wild Kent, Western Avenue, huge improvements, and that is opening uh, opportunities up for everybody. So I've been using Wild Kent every day now. It makes it much easier. I can bypass um, a lot of the school traffic, and it just makes it easier to transport and get around. So that's fantastic. Um, you know, we may even have to have, like, a conversation. I may have to have it with ICTC to see how maybe they can improve um, the busing through those routes. So that will be hopefully beneficial as well. So I'm going to bring that up. But I um, also attended the pep rally for the uh, Bell game. Unfortunately, Brawley wasn't successful in that win, but it was still a pleasure to see the community out and, uh, you know, getting them pumped up. And that was a whole lot of fun. So and uh, do want to thank the Chamber of Commerce again for the appreciation lunch that they put on for city staff. That's very much appreciated. I really certainly appreciated that, and I know staff did as well. And you're right, uh, Council Member Wharton, or, or Council Member Hemby, those uh, tacos uh, were delicious, you know? And so that was uh, just a good opportunity to share some time with the Chamber and, and with staff. Uh, also attended the chili cook-off, well attended. Looking forward to the events that are taking place. Uh, during the week and of course the rodeo and the parade and everything else so let's just have a good time the opening of quick quack car wash <laughs> that was you know that that was a three and a half million dollar investment and uh, and they have you know hundreds of these across the country and uh you know as as, as council member wharton mentioned there was like dozens of staff members and they're well dressed they you know dress shirts and ties and that's how they wash cars wow yeah it's it's an interesting process so it's just a very different approach and they're they're you know the relationship they have with their staff what do they say they hire they want smart people they want dedicated people is that what it was driven driven people yeah. and kind, kind. people yeah. so those are their smart, value kind, system driven yeah you know that's, that's and that's what they hire they're like and if you fail to do one of those things we promote you to a customer. That's a good way to say you're out. You know what I mean? Which I appreciate that. I really did appreciate that. It made a lot of sense. And so um, then, of course, the horseback ride the, you know, with, with the chief and with Chief Bovino and Chief Duran and our, our city manager as well, we did that horseback ride around town and uh, another great experience with the public. And, you know, it's a route that really kind of encompasses all of what Brawley has to offer. Just like I said earlier, that these kids represent Brawley, that route represents Brawley. You can see every aspect of it and every capacity. So interesting. I didn't think that the first time I did it, and then I saw it again. I'm like, yeah, this is everybody. 
You know, this is what Brawley is. And so from, you know, every socioeconomic level to every, you know, whatever you can imagine, that's what Brawley is. So it's very representative, and I really appreciated that. So um, I do want to thank everybody. Mayor for the day, that was planned in very, very, very short notice. I just got a wild thought driving to Lowe's one day. This is on a Saturday. On the way back, I put it together. I called Alex Cardenas, and I'll give him some public credit. Um, he had done it a, a while back. I'm like, how'd you do it? We spoke for like two minutes. I was like, cool. I'll call on Monday, call the superintendent. She helped put it together, and boom. And guess what? We do it. We put it together. And then Imperial copies us the very next day. Boom, just like that. So yeah. something's working, That's right? familiar. Yeah, right? Familiar. right. They still right. are so, coaches. You know, right? So anyway. I think we did it very well. I do want to thank staff and the public for being supportive of council and everybody. So, you know, just a great experience. And it's a great experience for the kids that were up here. I know um, our mayor, he was uh, he was a little nervous and, you know, but <laughs> he did well. I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, I've been up here with grown people and they're even more nervous. So, you know, it's a, uh, <laughs> and, and not not to mention us. I yeah. mean, when the public is out here yeah. and everybody's breathing down your throat, it gets pretty tough. I remember when we had um, the water rate increases over at the line center, there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, and I'm having to face them off. And it's like, yeah, that's tough. And when we had a packed room, and I was mayor the last time, too, and it was like attacking, 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 attacking. And you just got to sit there and take it, you know? And so it's like... like that snore group. You know? That's oh, then the yeah. snore group. <laughs> Woo! Yeah. Oh, they... Or something else, you know what I mean? So, yeah. <laughs> no, we appreciate you. Um, but, no, thank you, everybody. Um, I'll wrap it up at that. And, uh, thank you. you know, thanks again for everything. We appreciate you. And we'll move on to the city attorney report. So, Mr. Mayor, we did bring a code enforcement action uh, on I Street, an uh, overgrown lot, and I did a, my inspection yesterday, and it is rate clean and cases dismissed. Fantastic. Uh, we, we bring these nice. things to get attention, not to not to impose penalties. Right. Um, so, I just love success like that. The other good news is uh, there's nothing to report on closed session, so we can skip it. Fantastic. Well, and, that's and great. It is Veterans Day. You know, I'm a veteran. My son's a veteran, and, and uh, oh, really? Yeah. 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 All was, this time, I was yeah. a Navy officer. Yeah, a Navy. Uh, but, uh, yeah. An officer. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you better you better recognize. <laughs> yeah. I'll That's tell you right. about how I tried to become a Marine Corps officer and how hard that was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, thank you all very much, and uh, let's enjoy the rest of the week. Let's have a good time, and let's uh, be kind to one another. Thank you all very much.